Welcome back everyone to my YouTube channel. On this video tutorial, we will continue to cover Business Central. If you're on Business Central, how do you manage or administer your Business Central tenant and environments? Well, if you stick around and we'll cover the magic portal for administrators to do administrative tasks for your Business Central tenant and environment. All right, so the first thing we want to talk about is, of course, accessing the admin center. Uh, you don't want to make sure that everybody have access to the admin center. Uh, certainly uh, nobody maybe who does simple or different things or, um, you know, people in your organization that have access to Business Central, you don't necessarily want to give them access to the admin center for sure. So there's a few things that you're going to have to take care of before you can even get started. Of course, you want to make sure that you have the admin rights, uh, particularly, you know, maybe organize or set up roles who's going to be responsible managing and administrating your business central tenant in the environments. Uh, typically for those people with those roles are uh, internal tenant administrators, uh, admin agent, or even a help desk agent, right? So you want to be able to give them the role to access that. Now, without further ado, if you're taking care of all those, let's go ahead and jump into the admin center. Uh, the, the first thing you want to do is click on this three or not three, this cogs, and you'll see the admin center uh, component here. So if you go ahead and click on the admin center, it's going to open up a separate menu uh, or a separate tab or maybe a pop up window. And the first thing you'll notice when you get here is that all the different options here, and we're going to cover them uh, as much as possible, not necessarily all in detail, but we'll touch base in some of these things and what this means to you. All right. So the first thing you'll notice when you get into the admin center, of course, are your environments. So in, you know, within the environments tab, you'll see, uh, all your environments in one area. One is could be production. Certainly you can have a different name for this, by the way. Um, mine is just happened to be production, but you may have it called something else like your company name and the type is production. Uh, you may also have a sandbox as well. If you don't have a sandbox, you should create one, right? It doesn't take too long. Uh, so create a sandbox as well. You can have up to three sandbox, uh, but do keep in mind that the capacity of the storage does take up or they are sharing the same storage and we'll cover that under here in the capacity uh, shortly so the first thing you know you're going to take a look at is you know which you know what's its current state what's its current version you'll notice that my uh, sandbox version is older than my production but i do have an available update right so that may be scheduled all right um so you may have up to three sandboxes uh, and you may have different versions across the, across all of them, but you can always create a new one or delete one of the sandbox and create a copy of your production with the same version. If you need to test out or maybe do some additional training. All right. Um, the first thing, uh, before I move on to out of environments, one of the things that you can do as an administrator, uh, within, uh, within the admin center is you can drill into your environment. So in this case, I'm going to get into the sandbox really quick and you get a little bit of information. Uh, when is it scheduled? The update will begin, you know, May 25th. Um, and, and depending on when you have this on your schedule. Uh, another thing you, you'll, you'll notice here is the session component. Uh, it is available from directly from Business Central in the past in Dynamics Nav. Uh, sessions are typically um, ran directly from uh, the uh, development uh, application. Uh, in this case, you can get to that directly from the admin center. I can click on sessions. If there are any sessions open, I can go ahead and cancel uh, those sessions. I don't think I have any sessions here because I don't have it running. Uh, I'm, I am in production though. So let's take a look at that. You should see my, sh my session there. So I'm going to go ahead and click my session and it's going to try to collect. You see that I do have a session here. It's been up an hour and 29 minutes. I can go ahead and cancel that selection or you can do multiple selections as well. So if you have multiple users, you want to boot them out, you can select and cancel selected sessions 
And of course, you can jump into other uh, environments here as well. Um, if the session doesn't work or canceling session, you do have an option here to restart the environment. So uh, of course, you want to make sure that you communicate with the rest of the organization that you'll be restarting the environment. So you do have much more power in the Business Central SaaS or software as a solution or the online version of Business Central. All right. The next thing we want to cover is the notification recipients. It is very important that you have a notification set up here because uh, Microsoft will update and upgrade your environment and you want to make sure that you have an administrator or someone in your organization will get notified that that's been updated, right? So you can have multiple recipients as well. I can con continue to add, uh, um, with, you know, with, within, uh, within the admin center, if you have multiple admins or maybe uh, resources, you may want the, you know, uh, uh, subject matter experts to be aware, or maybe, uh, you know, managers or supervisors in the, in those areas. All right. The, the, the next thing is the telemetry, uh, telemetry is very helpful, uh, in regards to, you know, seeing kind of like insights of your environment. So for example, if I take a look at, you know, maybe in the 25th of May, uh, in the last 1400 minutes, and I'm going to be looking at, in the production. I don't think you have any other additional options here, but I'll go ahead and search. You can see all the objects that's been ran, um, you know, kind of gone through the function, uh, the function areas in this case, you know, on run. So you'll see all of that here. If there's any failure message or issues of an, an extension running, you will see that information here. So I can keep scrolling, you know, obviously there's a lot of information, so I would limit. So for example, if you had issues of um, you know, users complaining about some applications not running or maybe extensions not working. You can, you know, maybe minimize that in the last 10, 15 minutes and you get, in, uh, you know, a lot of information around that. Uh, one thing too is, uh, if you haven't seen that video yet, I did post a video about the in-client performance profiler. So you can take a look at that on one of, one of the corners there. I'll have a pop-up of that video. So if I keep searching here. Um, I should see all the other apps kind of right now. It's a base application, uh, system application. There's some blank ones here. Um, but, um, oh, there's one right here. This one was an example of an extension that I built, um, just to illustrate the performance profiler. It shows here that it ran, right? So, and it also gives you the object ID. So if I go back down, uh, you know, administrator can go ahead and identify, okay, um, it's uh, object ID 50,113. So uh, lots of information here uh, that your ad uh, uh, administrators can certainly utilize and log. All right. Uh, the next area is reported outages. Uh, it's really rare, which is a good thing to see any, any outages here, but you, whenever you do report an outage to uh, business central or not business, Microsoft, it will show up here, uh, with your ticket ID. And, um, uh, you know, they're, they're usually pretty proactive for you to even notice an environment's down, but I have seen where it goes down. Uh, you want to make sure that gets reported. Uh, the more people that reports, um, the better, uh, they'll get eventually, right. They'll, they'll put kind of stop gaps, uh, um, you know, within their environment. So Microsoft is working very hard in, in making sure that you have enough resources in your environment. So you don't get, you know, some odd issues or some outages or even performance issues. All right. Um, operations operations gives you visibility of what's been done on your environment. Uh, including app installations or maybe an update to your environment. So for example, I'm going to take a look at all my environments and let me just take a look at the last 30 days and I will filter. All right. You'll see that, uh, in all my production environment, there was an update. There was an app install. There was an app update app update. So, 
you know, you have that visibility. So if you're curious of when an application may have been updated or installed, you can certainly log in there and take a look to see uh, if you had any issues. Maybe there was a recent update and it broke your environment. You can take a look at here and identify, okay, what app was that? And then notify your partner um, that maybe there's an issue with an app because um, that happens when they do upgrade or update things can break still, right? Um, uh, although Microsoft is pushing all the other partners and uh, app developers to make sure that you are being proactive on your application, but nobody's perfect. I totally understand. Okay. N last but not least is the capacity. Uh, I mentioned earlier at the very top, you can have up to three sandboxes and we'll cover that here uh, very shortly. Essentially, you get 80 gigs of storage as a start. Um, every full user, you do get an additional two gigs of license, and you can see that um, uh, storage capacity by source. You can purchase additional um, storage as well, um, which is why I think it's important to, you know, administrator to maintain and, and, and keep an eye on this. So if you have full licenses, you get two gigs and it, it, they should show up at 82 gigs. If you have one fuller license because of my demo, I don't technically have a user uh, license. It's a demo environment. Uh, here uh, you get the quota of environments. So you have visibility, so you should only have one uh, production, uh, but you can have up to three. Again, keep in mind that if your production is 10 gigabytes and you have uh, uh, three copies or you create a sandbox, a copy of your production and you have three sandboxes, that's 30 gigs plus the 10 of your production. So essentially totaling, totaling up at 40 gigs of storage out of 80 that you're, um, allocated. Um, but again, you can buy additional storage, um, as well. All right. Um, and then last but not least is the storage usage by environment. So you can take a look at production and sandbox which one of those takes up the most space. In this case, my production, because I do a lot of testing in my production demo environment. Um, but on occasion you may have maybe flip the other way around. Uh, and you can also take a look at the, the list of tables. You can take a look at the storage per table, uh, this, which is very helpful by the way. Uh, and I'll show you that. So I'm going to click on list of tables. Uh, this table is actually called table information, which you can search from business central. Uh, so as soon as this pulls up here, it has to calculate all the table, which is why it's a little bit slow, but once it picks up, uh, you can see it's sorted by size in kilobytes. Uh, you know, for example, uh, change log entry is one of the things that grows, uh, significantly if you don't manage and maintain that in future videos, I'll be talking about the change log and how you can manage and talk about the retention policies and so and, and all that so you can help maintain. So this is very helpful as you know, storage is, you know, that can grow really, really fast, like change log entry. So you want to make, make sure you keep an eye on that. Uh, but this is very helpful um, uh, information. So table information, you can access that again directly from the admin center. So other than that, uh, I do hope that you find this information about Business Central Admin Center very helpful. One thing that I do want to note, it, uh, my recommendation is keep an eye on this one at least once a month to take a look at the storage, take a look at um, your usage, make sure that maybe um, update your sandboxes, right? It's because it's really easy to update your sandbox. I mean, we're talking about, um, you know, going to one year environments and then do a, a create a sandbox or copy a production to a sandbox. Uh, it's good to maintain uh, with when, when you, um, you know, updated sandbox and you can have up to three. Uh, again, I would keep an eye on this one on a monthly basis, maybe once a month um, and maybe, you know, create a report or generate a report using, you know, Power BI uh, and so forth. Um, now, before I end the video, I do want to appreciate all of those that are, you know, uh, following my videos, you, uh, you know, subscribing to my channel and taking a look at my website, uh, for much more detailed written up of the admin center. Uh, and of course, all my other blog posts and other videos as well. Uh, if you do find this content very helpful, 
uh, you know, uh, to you. Uh, please uh, like the video, uh, maybe share it, uh, or subscribe for my, to my channel to have to get um, uh, further, in, you know, other other videos in the future. And, and one of the things that I did create this channel in my blog is that when I first got into the dynamics world, I don't know, 16 years ago now, maybe uh, more or less, that it was always difficult to find content um, uh, online. Uh, usually it's a Microsoft uh, documentation or maybe some other people's posts, but never really a lot in details. There's certainly a lot of blogs out there, technical blogs, that's very helpful. Um, but I remember the pain of trying to learn it yourself. And so I'm hoping that for people that are just getting into the dynamics world, it's a great product. I hope that you'll find my content very helpful to help, you know, you start your journey in, in, in Business Central or even the dynamics or the full Microsoft stack. And that, um, you know, I, I remember the pain uh, of trying to find good content. So again, I hope you guys find this helpful. If you do like the video again, please like and subscribe to my channel. I truly appreciate. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next uh, video and blog and have a wonderful day. Take care.